Here we go with um, Edexcel Physics uh, A-Level um, A2 Unit 4 Physics on the Move from June 2015 and this is the multiple choice. Question 1. The number of neutrons in a nucleus of 238 uranium is how much? Okay, so we know that this uranium has 92 protons and 238 nucleons so the difference between those two is going to give us the number of neutrons so we've got 2, 3, 8, minus 92 to give us our number of neutrons so that's going to be 1, 4, 6, B Question 2. A particle of mass m has a velocity v and momentum p. Which of the following is correct for this particle? So we've got some expressions here, or equations, sorry. So we just take them in turn and see what we can find. Well, we've got mv squared over 2 here. That's like half mv squared. So this is kinetic energy and this is momentum squared. That's not true. We do have an equation that says that the kinetic energy is like p squared over 2m. And that might come into this somewhere. Um, m squared v squared, that's like p squared over 2. p squared over 2 equals 2 is p squared. That can't be right. m squared v squared, again, is like p squared. Um but it can't be equal to p squared over, over m. mv squared equal p squared over m. Now p squared over m here would be equal to twice the kinetic energy. And if the kinetic energy is a half mv squared, then twice, of, twice kinetic energy would be mv squared. So this one is correct. Question 3. Which of the following is not a valid conclusion from Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment? A. The nucleus is charged. Remember, we're looking for the things that aren't true. Nucleus is charged. Yeah. Nucleus contains neutrons and protons. Nucleus contains most of the mass of the atom. That's definitely from Rutherford's, and the nucleus is very small. Rutherford's experiment does not tell us about the contents of the nucleus, only that it's charged and it's small and that it has a, most of the mass so it's B Question 4. Electrons are released from a heated metal filament this process is known as well this is just book work from your notes that's called thermionic emission heat thermionic emission released which of the following is a possible unit for rate of change momentum, well, if you remember that Ft is mv minus mu, then rate of change of momentum is the same as force, mv minus mu over t, that's what that is. So we've got force, and uh, the only thing here relating to force would be like uh, F equals MA so it must be A Question 6 A length of current carrying wire is placed at right angles to a uniform magnetic field of flux density B when the current in the wire is I the force acting on the wire is F what is the force when the flux density is increased to 2B and the current is reduced to 0.25I well we've got a current carrying conductor at right angles so we can say that F is going to be B I L so uh, if we've got a, an original force force original and we've got force new 
Well, we want to write that as a ratio. Then we have to have B, I, L on the bottom for the original force and the new value of 2, B, times 0 0.25, I, times L for the new value and 2 times a quarter is 0 0.5 so basically what happens is we've got 0 0.5 over 1 so that's that one Question 7. A pendulum consists of a bob of mass m and a string of length x. The diagram shows the pendulum swinging through the arc of a circle and the bottom of its swing, the tension in the string is t and the velocity of the bob is v. Which of the following is the correct uh, expression for the bob at the bottom of the swing? So we just need to remember that uh, there must be a force towards the centre and it must be a value of m v squared over r so the balance of forces at that bottom point must equal m v squared over r and because it's um, x we can say that it's m v squared over x since that's the radius in this case so what you've got is a an object at the bottom there which has t pointing up and uh, mg pointing down and the resultant of that in the upward direction which is t minus mg has to equal m v squared over x so which of these expressions or which of these equations have um, that as the value of t so if we, we get t on its own we would have to add mg to both sides, so we get mv squared over x added to mg. And the only one that has those two added is b. And so 7 is b. Question 8. What is the acceleration of electron at a point in an electric field where the electric field strength is 2 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb? So the acceleration of anything is going to be F over M from Newton's second law. And uh, we also need to know the force on an electron in this situation. What's going to be that the force on an electron is going to be the electric field times the charge of an electron. So A is going to be um, electric field times little e over the mass of an electron. So we end up with 2 times 10 to the 4 coming from the question. The electron charge going in, the electron mass going in, and we just need to evaluate this for an acceleration. And I am getting this value which is indicating that this is the answer. Question 9. The equation delta E equals C squared delta M can be used with the data at the back of this paper to calculate one of these things. Well, the kinetic energy of an electron, the energy produced when a lambda particle decays, the energy of the photons produced when a proton and antiproton annihilate the mass of uranium that produces 50 megajoules of energy in a nuclear reactor. Well, the kinetic energy of an electron would depend on the situation. Uh, the energy produced when a lambda particle decays would require us to know the mass of a lambda particle. The energy of photons produced when a proton and antiproton annihilate, well, we could get that from the mass of a proton and then use it twice to get the annihilation of one with another. And the mass of uranium that produces 50 megajoules of that, well, again, that would need us to know 
the exact uh, masses involved in that particular situation. So the only one that we could really get would be this one here. Question 10. The Large Hadron Collider is designed to accelerate protons to very high energies for particle physics experiments. Very, very high energies are required for one of these reasons. Uh, to annihilate protons and antiprotons? Well, no, because they'll do that just by putting them next to each other. To allow protons co to collide with other protons? Um, uh, that's not really why we need high energies. To create particles with very large mass is sounding like it's going to be what we're looking for. And to produce individual quarks? Um, no, we're really looking at high energies to create large mass. So this is the answer. And that's it.